All right, fellas, we're going sober today. Cheers. Cheers to the Nestle oh, Pure Life. Yes. Yeah. Gotta <laughs> hydrate. 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 Yeah. All right, guys, welcome to the uh, latest episode of Bitcoin Happy Hour. I'm your host, Colin Harper, and today I am with a very special guest, Andrew Yang. Uh, not the presidential candidate, but uh, still a not an inconsequential uh, member of the Bitcoin sphere. He is with River Financial. They just launched recently. He's going to give us a little bit of information about uh, their company, uh, the niche they're trying to fill. Um, and we're also going to kind of branch that out into broader market liquidity and things like that. I've also got uh, recurring panelists with me. Yes. Christian Carolls, also known as CK Snarks, host of POV Crypto, also does podcast stuff with us here at Bitcoin Magazine. Uh, but, but first, before we launch into this episode, I want to give a shout out to our sponsor, Give Bitcoin. Uh, GiveBitcoin.io is the only place where you can go to give Bitcoin to your loved ones, friends, and your coworkers, while also teaching them about the world's first cryptocurrency, why we all think it's valuable, and all the mechanisms that underpin it and uh, all the theories that kind of surround it. Uh, I've used it uh, multiple times to give uh, Bitcoin to my friends and my family. Plan on using it a lot this holiday season. It's got a really clean UI, clean UX, um, and the educational material is going to be fire. They've got chapter one out right now, I believe, and I think they've got 11 more chapters that will come out on a rolling basis. So if you haven't checked out GiveBitcoin.io, go check them out right now and use uh, GiveBitcoin.HappyHour.io. Happy Hour. HappyHour.GiveBitcoin. Yeah. Yeah, use HappyHour.GiveBitcoin.io. That's our referral link. And uh, yeah, so tell them that we sent you guys. But uh, all right, so let's just launch right into it, guys. So as I said before, this is Andrew Yang. He is with River Financial. And I guess I'll let you kind of give the... What, what, what do they call it? The elevator pitch? The elevator pitch, dude. I mean, we're just a Bitcoin-only brokerage with Lightning Network support. I think we're the best place to buy, sell, and use Bitcoin and the Lightning Network for the long-term investor. Um, like, we care a lot about our clients. Um, like, if, if you have any problem, like, we give you, like, live human support. You can call us. You can um, chat through the chat box. You're going to talk to a real human being. You ain't going to talk to a robot. And oh, nice. so, yeah, like, I think it's, like, really cool. Um, plus, like, we're super, like, we came out swinging with Lightning Network, PSPT, and native um, SegWit addresses. Yeah, and so the so, whole, all, all the new, all the new technologies bundled into one, right? Yeah. So, uh, you know, I see the Lightning angle, and that's the first thing that I'm really drawn to. But, like, yeah. why would I use you guys as opposed to, like, another, like, brokerage service? Like, what? Like Coinbase or somewhere else where you buy Bitcoin. Dude, I mean, like, okay, so Alex, our CEO, I think he said it best. Like, we're not like a crypto company. We're like a Bitcoin financial institution that we're trying to build. Like, we want to bring legitimacy uh, uh, of Bitcoin. Like Charles Schwab of Bitcoin? Yeah, yeah, pretty much, yeah. We're targeting, like, um, high-end users. uh, And we also want to help our clients stack sets with, like, recurring buys, you know? Um, But with Lightning, I think it's, uh, you know, one of the things we say is that it's going to, you should kind of treat it like it's in beta. But like in the long term, so this is just like the beginning phase. Like the, you know, we want to introduce our clients to Lightning. We want them to use uh, instant payments. We want them to experience that and feel that. And then, um, you know, potentially uh, there might be some opportunities, especially for like uh, fiat liquidity. Uh, like if you're a Lightning Network routing node, um, mm-hmm. rather than having to use a Bitcoin transaction to top up your Lightning node with a submarine swap, just do it with fiat, right? Like why right. waste a Bitcoin transaction fee for that? Okay, so basically what you're saying is like people could go through like a a, a lightning liquidity provider like BitRefill, say, or some or like anyone, right? Um, they could basically go through River Financial to have that fiat liquidity, and they yeah. could just use a transaction on uh, River Financial's ledger and just have the SAT without having to go through all of the on-chain headache. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right, that's pretty cool. So I know that uh, a lot of traders are excited about Lightning yeah. inside of exchanges because a lot of times there's issues getting money onto the exchange. Yeah. Like you want to, you know, do something on BitMEX and you just you literally can't get the Bitcoin to confirm on chain fast enough yeah. for you to do your thing. So they want Lightning for that purpose. It doesn't sound like you guys are really trying to cater to the BitMEX leverage crew. Like it is like why why do you why are you guys so interested in lightning if you're not going to be doing leverage and that kind of stuff um we're interested in lightning because like you know we think it's going to help uh, scale bitcoin right like the more transactions we can put off chain it's going to just ease like the ibd like the initial block down row, right and so um like we want to be like good actors we won't like we care about bitcoin like i think it's kind of like um 
which we call uh, it's like a community resource that we all should like try to take care of and like like t- um, give our best foot forward when it comes to stuff like that, right? I think lightning is part of it, um, but you know it, there might be a possible future for us where we um, connect large lightning network channels between exchanges and let people kind of um, arbitrage. I don't know. Uh, we'll have to like look into that. So you guys are really want to be like, or not most of what you want to be, but like one of the potential business niches for you guys is like this idea of being like a fiat gateway. Yes. For So yeah. you guys aren't, wouldn't just be a routing and a liquidity hub for all of these, uh, <clears throat> for all these lightning nodes and all these actors on the lightning network, but you could legitimately be one of the fiat gateways. So like, uh, uh, are you guys uh, bullish on things like uh, like Olympus or like SparkSwap? Do you know these two? Uh, I know like... Olymp- I know uh, SparkSwap. Like okay. what's Olympus? Uh, it's it's kind of similar. Um, I couldn't really get into like the technical nitty gritty because it's been a while. But it was released by uh, by Jack Maulers. Um, oh yeah, it will be released. Will be released. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is it not? I thought it was. I thought you could use it today. Am I wrong about that? I think that? there's like a wait list and they're, work, they're working on it. Right, okay, yeah. So basically what it is is like push payments. Yeah. So where you can basically send like, you know, a wire transfer to a liquidity provider and they open up a channel with you and they push the balance to you. Right. Right, so I don't know if like you guys are thinking about it in those terms or like how would you, would it be as simple as, uh, let's say that I'm an exchange and uh, I need to buy, you know, like, or I don't know, buy or sell like, uh, you know, LBT, LBTC. Like what I just like, let's say I wanted to buy some liquidity from you, you guys. Lightning? V- yeah. Lightning? Yeah. Or, okay. What, no, not what, what do you guys, oh, shit. Yeah, what do you I guys call, everything. what do you guys call Lightning Bitcoin? I call it Lightning Bitcoin. Okay. Yeah. Because yeah. LBTC, that's liquid. Yeah, that, that's liquid. Yeah. Okay. So let's, let, let's, let, sorry. Uh, we need to get our definition straight. So Lightning Bitcoin. Yeah. Like if I wanted to buy Lightning Bitcoin from you guys, would it be as easy as that? Or I just like send you guys a check? And then you guys open a payment channel with me to provide the liquidity or you send me some sats on the Lightning Network. Like what would it look like for you guys to provide that kind of liquidity for people? Yeah, so uh, because we are custodial, right? Okay. Um, when you buy Bitcoin, you just buy Bitcoin, mm. right? And then so you choose whether you want to withdraw that Bitcoin on chain or through oh, Lightning. okay. Yeah. Okay. And so I think there's a space for SparkSwap and Olympus. Like those are, I think, are for more like technically minded people. Uh, people who really care about like being non-custodial and i think that's awesome and i think that's great but i think there's also you know if we want to reach the match mass market um it's just we can provide a better ui ux experience because a lot of these wallets are separating like bitcoin and then lightning bitcoin accounts right and that might be confusing to the people but um for us it's just one bitcoin you just have bitcoin in your account and you just tell us how you want to withdraw it okay and we can do that because we're custodial okay cool and so and uh, I like let's say I'm an exchange and I want to cash out of my Lightning Bitcoin. So could I send you guys? Do I need to send you guys on chain or can I send you guys Lightning Bitcoin through uh, through River Financial? Yeah, um, let's say you have a corporate account with uh, River Financial. Okay. And um, you want to cash out, um, you would send a Lightning payment as long as there's enough capacity, and then right. you can sell it right away. Okay. You can sell it right away. Okay. Cool. Um, and you said you guys are, are custodial. Um, who are you guys working with for custody? Uh, can, is that some, is that under NDA or is that something that you could talk about? Yeah. So uh, I guess we should define it like custodial, meaning like we control the Bitcoin. We right. hold the Bitcoin on behalf of our clients. Okay. Yeah. So you guys are the custodian and the, okay, cool. Yeah. Um, like compared to other exchanges, like how unique is the way that you guys like custody stuff? Um, like, how we custody things. yeah like in terms of custodying uh bitcoin like is it a completely out of the box uh approach like what's what's the how much innovation is happening you know from river i mean i think we're we're pushing the boundaries of security like making it we're raising the bar uh like a lot of our infrastructure is self-hosted and we put them in military grade vaults and so i think that's something that um is like unique to us so um I kind of want to branch out from River Financial here sure. for a second because Let's I'm just it. like thinking uh, what I was what I was saying earlier, like the Charles Schwab of Bitcoin or TD Ameritrade. But, you know, I take like any brokerage service. Right. And we were talking about you were saying how some, uh, you know, like with SparkSwap and Olympus, they're going for a kind of non-custodial. Yeah. Uh, bent, and you guys are custodial, obviously. Um, I personally think stuff like River Financial. I'm trying to think of some other ones. Um I mean, I think Bitfinex recently added Lightning Network. Yeah. Yeah. Like Bitfinex added uh, Lightning Network, but I'm kind of getting towards like um, this idea of having a really polished and like buttoned up version to buy Bitcoin, right? Because like when I go to like 
my father and I'm like, hey, dad, like you need to get some Bitcoin. Like, you know, he can go to Coinbase or Cash App or Cash App. But even those for someone who's used to going into like a financial advisor and you're sitting down with someone and you have a dashboard with all the stocks and the market caps and all these yeah. other things, it still seems really like minor league. Do you know what I mean? Like something like Coinbase or Cash App feels like, oh, this is kitties playing with their yeah. like magic internet beans or whatever, right? So for something like River Financial, it, it gives Bitcoin a good look for these people, right? And I think like Grayscale Bitcoin also did some stuff there right. where like it kind of feels like you're getting, I mean, they have a crazy premium, which I don't know why anyone would pay that. <laughs> but, um, you know, it makes people feel maybe a little more comfortable. It makes them feel like, oh, okay, like this reminds me of, uh, you know, more traditional investment vehicles. So um, I guess uh, I just kind of want to get your idea on, you know, besides River Financial, what are some other companies that are kind of doing stuff like this? Because I feel like 2019, we've seen, um, you know, for lack of a better phrase, like buttoned up Bitcoin become more of a thing. You know, there are more ways for people to buy it that feels kind of more like a traditional asset class for the people who aren't going to want to do their own custody. They're just going to want someone to custody it for them, just like they have their stocks held in a brokerage account at Schwab, et cetera, right? Yeah, I would say, you know, uh, maybe Casa Huddle uh, kind of targets this um, people who are H&Is and um, people and maybe even like BlockFi might be targeting that demographic. Mm, that's another good one. Yeah. But I think, you know, from a retail like buying Bitcoin perspective, uh, you know, we I think that's the, the gap that um, Alex and Andrew Benson um, saw in this space. And I think that's why uh, we're offering um, a lot of like financial tools like um, yeah, we're going to uh, hopefully by the end of the year, roll out something called like performance tracking, like cost based cost basis tracking charts and stuff okay. and that'll make it like really um that's the kind of stuff that um people who trade on stock exchanges are used to and comfortable with right, right. And that that helps like um set up their taxes like later on and so um i think we want to bring a level of uh like standard when it comes to like buying bitcoin and financial services yeah absolutely and i think that's the other thing that i like about this is this is like for retail investors yeah. right like i feel like every time you have like a good polished and clean um, traditional finance type uh, on ramp for Bitcoin. It's always for the it's always for the accredited investors, right? So like your average Joe doesn't have a way to buy in that they feel protected, right? Um, and you know, again, Coinbase and Cash App, great things for these for like the average person. I personally love Cash App, um, but I just think that that whole idea of like a a uh, really clean uh, Bitcoin on ramp for the suits. I think that that can't be overstated. Well, honestly. I think my favorite thing about this, the whole the whole platform and idea, is just like thinking about dollar cost averaging first. Like, yeah, yeah that's I, I love point. Cash App, but you still can't dollar cost average. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm trying to you know help friends dollar cost average, and you know it's a lot of like, hey, reminding them to to do it or whatever. So um, it's just very manual. Um, so being able to set and forget without getting gouged in, on Coinbase or uh, and Gemini or whatever the people who, who who also offer those um, and doing that Bitcoin only I think that's like that's really um, the the biggest impotence to to, to try out river.com for sure yeah um, what what other topics do we have um, some <laughs> exciting stuff happened this week did it yeah um, Z man oh shoot yeah, yeah uh, square exciting. crypto yeah so square crypto. I mean, Square Crypto out here just like bootstrapping open source development because they they just, this is coming off an eight hundred thousand or a hundred thousand dollar grant to BTC Pay Server Foundation, yeah, which is cool. And then, yeah, so wait, you give, give us the details on on this uh, um, on so, this grant. So I actually don't know too terribly much about uh, about Z Man. I mean, I know who he is. So but... Z Man is like an active like lightning. He's like really active in the Lightning Dev well, mailing list. He he she. Right, them, um, them they, they. So that he's a pseudonymous individual, dude, yeah. and like, yeah, we don't know where he lives, we don't know like who he is, or, um, and so it's just funny, like his his name on the Lightning Dev mailing list is like a hash. It's kind of it looks like a hash, and so at the Lightning conference, um, I think people just calling started calling him Z Man, so Z M N, like that's like the first three letters you see in his like uh, pseudo pseudonym, and so we just started calling him Z Man. And uh, yeah, Square Crypto decided to just like um, fund this guy, and I think it's like super dope. Does anyone know how much it was? Because I like from all of the like 
all we know is that this individual was working as a developer somewhere else that had a day job and yeah. Square Crypto enabled the individual to quit the day job and work on Lightning full time. Yeah. And this is the only thing, like this is one of the things that's only possible through trustless digital cash because they could present an address or an invoice and they get sent Bitcoin and that's it. No questions asked. You don't need to know anything about them. Um, so it's a, it's a pretty amazing example of you know what this technology enables as well as like it this is again like another like proof that bitcoin is not run by one company yeah. or anything like that I, like I think, you know there's it, it's permissionless to get involved and make a difference in bitcoin and it i is. think that was one of the coolest things too like bar getting hard cash in hand like a bitcoin payment is like the only way that you could fund something like this completely anonymously right and not have to dox the person involved yep like can't do that with a GoFundMe, can't do that with a PayPal, you know, can't do that with like a credit card, debit card processor. Um, and uh, I just think it's just such a beautiful testament, especially to the people who are just like, like people forget this, but most of the best developers in Bitcoin sacrifice their time to work on it. Yeah, right? they don't really get paid. No, they it's don't. It's kind of hard. Exactly. And that's why like I think it's ridiculous when like Ethereans try to dunk on Blockstream. It's like if you were the best, I mean like I kind of get the fears there. Yeah. But if you were the best and brightest developing Bitcoin and someone came to you and said, we will pay you X amount of money per year to do this full time. And you get a, you get to choose your focus. Exactly. Like, like, you know, like that seems like such a no brainer to me. It's like, you know, kudos to Blockstream for being one of the first companies to have enough funding to be able to do something like this. Now we definitely want to branch the development outside of Blockstream. And that's one thing that I love about what Square Crypto is doing. It's not a bunch of money, but it's enough allocated towards the projects and the people that matter for it to make a difference. And I think, especially, I just think it's also beautifully uh, symbolic that they're funding a Lightning developer. Yeah. Like 2019 was the year of Lightning. Like we didn't get a bunch of, we didn't get the adoption that some people probably wanted, but a lot of the important uh but the foundation is being laid. The cornerstone is being laid to build on top of. <laughs> so I have a hot take about what 2019 was the year. Of. Okay, what was the year? I think I think it was the year of the Bitcoin plebs. The Bitcoin really, plebs. Really? Yeah. I think I think Bitcoin took over the shitcoin pitch, and now we have the Bitcoin plebs. And I, think I don't think people true. don't quite understand the magnitude of like the fact that like Bitcoin took over the shitcoin pitch. Like there, there are people who just care about number go up and all this stuff, and they're just beating on the Bitcoin drum now. And like you'll see people complaining about it online, but it's just like, <laughs> like we got the freaking Ripple trolls. Like they're on Bitcoin's team now. Yeah. And uh, I, I think Bitcoin's memes are just getting mass so con much, mass conversion. Whatever. They're just getting Bitcoin's memes are getting more potent, and like they're effective as fuck. Uh, so Bitcoin's the years, 2019 year of the Bitcoin plebs. Yeah, I mean, and you even see it in the companies too, like Hostel, I think this year made a recent um, uh, saying like, you know, we're just only going to focus on Bitcoin. Um, you have like, yeah, OpenNode, you have us like River Financial, like Give Bitcoin, um, all these other companies that are just focused on Bitcoin only. Yeah, Radar had their Relay, which is an Ethereum product, and then they recently launched Ion. Yeah. And I'm talking to a lot, like, I'm friends with one of uh, their dudes who works there and kind of in contact with the team. And I get the feeling that like, they they really, Bitcoin. yeah, they're really moving towards the Bitcoin focus. I mean, yeah. we're also kind of a testament to this. Like, Bitcoin Magazine covered, you know, shit coins in 2017 and for um, a lot of 2018 as well. And then we were eventually. Colin Harper's like, a testament to this. Yeah, man. <laughs> Dude, I was, I'm a hard converter. We were talking about this before the pod, actually. That's funny. Um, yeah, man, I was like a big shitcoin guy. Like, I didn't know any better. Like, I entered the industry like in the bull run, and so I didn't like. I was literally like, when people tell you it's like shitcoins are bad because like people waste time on things that are like infeasible. Like, I was literally that person. Mm. Like, got all the shitcoin pitches, ate all the shitcoin lunch, you know. Um, and then I started working at this company, and then people really started. You know, once you hammer home, like once you hammer home Bitcoin fundamentals to people, I really do think it's just a matter of time before like their old, uh, you know, their kind of old notions of the industry start to get eroded away. Because once you actually are confronted with, arguably, I think we could all agree with this, the only project that has kind of proven itself as being worthwhile in, in the sense of like, you know, if I had to bet on one about being here 20 years from now, Bitcoin would be the one that I bet on. Like once you're presented with its fundamentals and its development, it's very hard to argue with, you know? Like I think Ethereum is like the closest thing it has, is like a close second. Like it definitely is, second. but it, that's the thing is it's still even distant there, right? You yeah. know, like, and a lot of Ethereans do get upset about that, but 
it's just like Bitcoin. I try to explain this to David. It's like Bitcoin has proven that it has a use case. Like other coins haven't proven that yet. Yep. You know, and it has a narrative too, a very clear narrative. But of course we believe that. Cause, yeah, because we're cause drinking we're, the Kool-Aid. <laughs> we're indoctrinated. But like uh, the something I like to highlight is that, um, you know, the Bitcoin community is actually pretty forgiving. I don't mm. think a lot of people realize that. Um, like, for example, like I used to work for an ICO company, I think back in like 2017 or whatever. Mm. Right. And um, it's because like I was trying to get into the space and then, you know, trying to get involved. And, you know, I was like kind of open to like um, tokens and all coins and all that stuff. And, you know, as I was like applying to other companies, like prior to River, like I was talking to Bitcoin companies and I was like, I was like kind of ashamed to share that, like, you know, I was working, I used to, I didn't mm. work in a token ICO company. And they're like, dude, we get it. Like it happens. Everyone has a past, like they have their own journey. Mm. Um, you want to work in Bitcoin now? That's cool. Let's like talk. And so that was like a really cool experience for me as yeah. I was going through that journey. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think it really is a community where it's like once you admit I think one of the things for me is like if you're arguing with someone and you get bested and you admit I had a bad argument or I was ignorant to information that you gave me that like just came to light and you admit where you were wrong, like they absolutely are forgiving. Like they'll yeah. say, you know, like, like they're so quick to forget. Yeah. Like especially on Twitter. Like just be like, all right, I was wrong. <laughs> it's when you double. <laughs> and then it's done. Yeah, it's when you're you done. double down when you don't know what you're oh. talking about or act like an asshole. Yeah. That's when you get the maxis trolling you, mm. right? And it's where, and I think for some people, it legitimately is. They either don't see that they're wrong or it's so subjective that they, you know, who, you know, what is wrong in that situation. Hot or cold? What, what, what do you think of the word maxi? Hot or cold? Yeah. Maxi or maximalist? Maxi, specifically. Oh, I'm cold on maxi. You cold on maxi? Yeah. You don't, you don't like it? I'm, I don't know. I'm, I'm cool. lukewarm on it. I think, like, the reason why, like, you know, especially, like, ETH heads love it is because it's, like, a maxi pad, obviously. Like, that's why they like saying that. Because they like to act like, which is, like kind of funny like kind of like vague like very sexist for like the camp that claims to be more like socially progressive yeah <laughs> you know um yeah i don't know I, I like maximalist i don't really mind maxi it's like mm, i don't like maximalist but oh yeah no, you just, don't like it i just like bitcoiner yeah i mean bitcoiner is definitely better i mean maximalist is a pejorative that we've like you know kind of adopted and you know made our own which i think is like there's a powerful statement in that i, I think, think that's happening to maxi too you think yeah. oh you just you were just saying it yeah you're already like oh there's the maxis whatever there's the maxis there's just a nice abbreviation it's subconscious like we don't even realize it's happening <laughs> it's just an abbreviation it's just an abbreviation <laughs> oh jeez yeah, never say that again <laughs> no but you have a, you have a good take on bitcoiners like you say uh if you hold bitcoin you're a bitcoiner yeah, hundred percent. I like that. I like that perspective. I mean, I, but is that true? Most though? altcoiners are also Bitcoin. If I hold an, if I hold Ethereum, does that make me an an, an ETH head or? Do you Ethereum? hold Bitcoin? I do kind hold of. Bitcoin. You're a Bitcoiner, but I guess even if you hold Ethereum. Oh, well, yeah, I mean, the right. thing is, but being an Ethereum is defined by being a part of the Ethereum community to some degree, whereas being a Bitcoiner has nothing to do with being a part of the community. In 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 fact, you can be completely, you can be completely, uh, I guess antagonistic to bitcoin and still be a bitcoiner like, but i guess like it doesn't even matter like you can be building competitive technology but yet you are still a bitcoiner which but is i guess proven what bitcoin is that's my question though it's like but so if ethereans can hold ethereum but not be ethereans why can bitcoiners hold bitcoin and not do any oh, sorry why can uh, people who hold ethereum but who aren't involved with anything not be Ethereans, but people who hold Bitcoin and aren't involved with Bitcoin at all are still Bitcoin. I'm not even trying to make that argument. I don't give a shit about Ethereum. If you hold Bitcoin, (laughs) you're Bitcoin. Well, what if I hold like... You can call me an Ethan. I don't give a shit. What if I hold like 0.1 Bitcoin and like 90 ETH? Am I still a Bitcoiner? That's Bitcoin off the market. That's skin the game. If Bitcoin 100X is, you're going to fucking be super stoked you have that. You're one of the biggest maximalists I know. I'm a Bitcoiner. (laughs) See, that's that's so interesting that you like... You said that because I feel like uh, maybe the traditional understanding of what a maximalist would be like, like screw Ethereum. like, yeah. yeah, if you if you hold like one Ethereum, you're not a Bitcoiner. Like I, I, that's like the hardline stance that I would say. Yeah. But then They're but then you the just in, you just for like me, painted it in a yeah, different way. Yeah, I think for it's me, so interesting. I think for me, it's like maximalism for me is do you believe that Bitcoin? This is just my personal definition. Do you believe that Bitcoin is uh the most superior iteration of cryptocurrency in terms of decentralization, liquidity, and use case. If you say yes to that 
question, then you're a maximalist. Interesting. But like I can still be bullish on, I'm not saying I necessarily am, but I can still be bullish on other developments like Ethereum and think that maybe something will come of them, right? Yeah. Like I can still be a maximalist and admit Ethereum may still be here in 10 years. Hmm. Do I think Ethereum is going to capture like every market in the world and that we're going to be tokenizing our children in 20 years? Like, no, I don't believe that. Like the Ethereans who say like Ethereum is just going to like, you know, absolutely... Uh, transcend Bitcoin's market cap because it's a totally new financial system that everything's going to be built on. Like, I don't believe that's going to happen, but maybe it finds a use case and maybe it's still around. I think a better way to phrase it is like, will will a coin like Ethereum be relevant? A coin can exist in 10 years. Fine. You just run like two, three notes. It's still running. Yeah, good it's point. still existing, right? Good point. Yeah. Nobody cares about it, but is, yeah. will it still be relevant? Yeah, I guess I should say that. Is it statistically relevant? Like, is, is the network seeing like serious use and is there actual real liquidity, right? Yeah. Um, and, uh, that's why I always say, that's why I'm a Bitcoin maximalist personally is because I believe that Bitcoin he outed himself through, yeah, <laughs> sorry, guys, like in case you couldn't tell, yeah. but like between, um, it's, uh, between, uh, technical stress testing, between social tests and all these other things, you know, it's, uh, it's proven itself to have clear use cases and I think it's going to be around it's hard, hard, read. Money. hard money, baby. Let's go hard money. All right, uh, we got to wrap it up. Do we want to talk about BTC Pay? And, uh, the uh, just do a quick, quick. Hey, yeah, quick so I mean, it's kind of fun. For those of you who haven't seen, uh, Russell Kuhn, who is a clear part of the Bitcoin community, yeah, now he is, is rocking BTC Pay cleats now for the second game in a row. Um, so on mainstream media, on CBS or Fox or whatever, when you're watching a Chargers football game, you zoom in, you can see a lineman wearing bright green cleats and they say oh, btc pay on them they stick out like crazy they it's do awesome they're, they're pretty awesome. they're pretty cool um like on say? twitter uh it says like the bitcoin cleats guy <laughs> yeah like, that's pretty that's, that's pretty yeah, it is and he said that he's tweeted out like a bunch of people have like it sparked a conversation in the locker room again about oh, like what bitcoin is that's cool yeah um let's go but Moving for some shaking, for some go. background for people uh the nfl has this thing called my cause my cleats and what it is is it's uh, NFL players design or have someone design cleats for them and it's for just like a, a, a cause or a charity so yeah you know, like a lot of dudes will do like you know boys or girls foundations things like that um, but Russell Okung did BTC pay server the decentralized payment processor for his um, and it's just like a crazy shout out and I think it's like also um, like I just published a cover story about BTC pay today and cool. I just think like I mean, they've had a fucking year, man. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. they could be the year of BTC Pay. <laughs> I mean, but dude, it's crazy and the <laughs> because they've been doing. I mean, they've had like fundraisers for Tour and for Hodel Knots Legal Defense that they got a lot of press for. They got the hundred k Square Grant. They've got other grants from like Satoshi's Wallet and uh, some other people. Um, now they were featured on an NFL uh, field two weeks in a row. Yes. Um, and it's crazy. It kind of goes back to what we were saying about Z. I mean, these are just due to like literally, like I was talking to some of them, like Andrew, uh, he goes by Kooks or Cucks. Yeah, Kooks. Kooks. Yeah. And uh, Andrew, um, Kooks, and uh, people like Britt Keller, Nicholas, Rockstar Dev, Pavlinex. Like they just like, this is their like full-time job. Like, and they consider it their full-time job even though they're not getting paid for it. Yeah. And uh, I mean, they're just putting in crazy man hours building out this stack, and it's uh, it's really inspiring to see, and I'm really happy to see that they're getting some love thrown their way because they deserve it. They do deserve it. BTC Pay is a great product, and they didn't they didn't pay for anything like for Russell Kuhn. Like that was there's no no financial totally. transaction. It was just Russell was like, I love BTC Pay. I'm gonna do this. I'm just gonna design it myself and do it. Totally organic. Hey yeah. Russell, win orange cleats. If you're gonna be a Bitcoin cleat man, you gotta get orange cleats. Let's I like go. it. That'd be dope. All right, y'all. Well, we've got an event to get to, so I think yeah. that wraps it up. Yeah, cool. let's wrap it up. So uh, before we leave, Andrew, where can people find you on Twitter? Uh, you can find me at eCurrencyHodler. Where can people find you? At CK Snarks and at POV Crypto Pod. Take a listen. And Ooh. you can find me at As I Lay Hodling, or you can just look up my name, Colin Harper, 1L, and you'll see me around on Bitcoin Magazine as well. But anyway, that concludes this episode. Thanks for joining us, Andrew. Yeah. Really appreciate it. That was, it was a great a pleasure. talk. Yeah. And thanks for joining us, guys. Uh, tune in for more podcasts and more content for Bitcoin Magazine. Happy holidays. Yeah, happy holidays, guys, and Merry Christmas. Cheers. Done. <laughs>